Well, hey there, native plant enthusiasts. This is Santino, Education Coordinator for Bowman's and Wildflower Preserve, coming at you with another nature note. I'm here on the floor of our moss garden to showcase one of the coolest native plants that I just learned about. A huge shout out to our naturalist, Joan, who informed me of this plant, and I had to give the showcase and share it with you all. So, what you see before me, this brown, unassuming, stick-like plant um, is called a beech drop. And it is an obligate parasite, meaning that it relies on its host for its survival and reproduction. And it gives nothing back as part of that relationship. So beech drops, or Epiphagus virginiana, epi meaning on the, and phagus referring to the beech family, requires that beech tree, the American beech tree, as I said, for its survival and reproduction. It can't do anything without that close relationship. So first up, as you can see, it looks like a brown stick. You don't see any greenery on this plant, and that's because this plant has no chlorophyll. It does not photosynthesize on its own. It's actually pulling energy from the root of the beech tree to grow. Now, before that, all right, once the seed lands, it requires a chemical that is produced from the roots of the beech tree in order to trigger germination. Once germinated, it survives on the energy stored within the seed and creates a tap root of sorts. This tap root taps into the roots of the beech tree directly, allowing it to grow and sap energy off of the beech tree itself, leading to its growth. The plant itself uh, is less than a foot tall when it's fully matured and producing flowers. Now this beech drops produce two types of flowers. The upper flowers uh, are able to be cross-pollinated. It requires insects for pollination. Typically, this is ants that do the pollination work, uh, but other things like bees can also provide that assistance. And this plant also has a backup plan for pollination uh, in the event that and no insects visit the plant, the lower flowers on this plant are actually self-pollinatable, um, so to speak. So they don't open up, they stay closed, and they can uh, pollinate themselves, which is a great backup strategy. Of course, genetic diversity and cross-pollination always leads to a stronger genetic diversity, and it's better for the species. Once pollinated, the plant produces a seed that is dispersed by the rain, and the plant then hopes that rain washes the seed within the vicinity of a beech tree, which will then start the process all over again. What happens if the seed doesn't land near a beech tree? Well, it croaks. Um, it, it won't survive and reproduce, so again, it needs that, that host relationship. All right, friends, I know that was a bit of a quick one, but I had to showcase this plant. It is super cool and got me super jazzed. I hope you take the opportunity to stop by the moss garden and check it out for yourself. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below, comment uh, something cool that you learned about it, about this plant, and uh, yeah, make sure you share the video with your friends. All of the, your interactions go a long way to help showcase the importance of native plants to all life on this planet. And as always, my friends, I want you to keep on experiencing what's natural and learn what's native. Take care.